I already been announcing that schoolbook RSA is a really bad idea, um, but this lecture is now finally covering why it is a problem. So why one shouldn't use schoolbook RSA. Now this is part one, which kind of uh, makes you anticipate that there will be more than one part. And yes, there are many parts why you shouldn't be using schoolbook RSA. So let's start with something which is called small exponent RSA problems. So um, in order to speed up the computation, it is common to use an e which is small. So small in absolute value, for instance, 3 or 17, but also small in Hemming weight. So Hemming weight is the number of ones in the binary representation. And if you take a look at the exponentiation video, then you see that every bit in the representation costs squaring and every one in the representation costs an additional multiplication. So you want to have a small Hemming weight and a short representation. And of course, you also want to have the system be secure. So the typical choices here, the 3 and the 17 are kind of obvious, and there's also the 65537. Now 65537 is one of those numbers that you should remember for the next pub quiz, because, well, 65537 is 2 to the 16 plus 1. So Hemming weight is just 2, that means you need 16 squarings and 1 multiplication. If you have both the message and the exponent being small, then you have kind of the obvious problem that if you take the message to the e, there is no reduction. So you haven't even reached n yet. So for instance, if you've seen 4096 and you know that the exponent was 3, then it is fairly likely that there was no reduction. Well, 4096, we know this number. That's 2 to the 12. Oops, 2 to the 12. What? 4096 to the 12. So that means it's just 2 to the 3 times 4. That means it's 2 to the 4. Cubed. So the message was 60. We didn't even need to think about factorization or any other complicated text on the RSA. We can just see that the plain text was 16. Now this is very much dependent on the exponent being small, but also the message being small. So you can deal with this, and 3 is actually a choice that we have seen a lot on the internet as well. Um, nowadays there is more of the 65537. But even with that number, it could happen if you have a 4,000 bit RSA number, then 2 to the 16 is a rather small number. So how can we deal with this? Yeah, there's an obvious solution. You have seen padding in case of log sizes and in case of hash functions and max. And so also here the solution is to have some padding. Now in this case, the padding should ensure that the message gets large enough. So you want to ensure that your message is somewhere in the bits so that you have some high bits set so that reduction modulo n does appear. That will be a little bit short for our lecture, so let me do one more issue, which is also for small or low exponent RSA. Namely, here's a situation. Patty is having a party and didn't invite Eve. Now that's already a big problem, because we know Eve, she doesn't like that idea. Worse, at least in the mind of the photographer, worse, Patty is using schoolbook RSA. So here are the keys of Alice, Bob and Charlie. They all are using exponent 3 because they're nice to the person encrypting to them, so they don't want to cause too much effort in the encryption function. And so all of them have exponent 3, and then they have their very private NA, NB, and NC. So there's nothing wrong in isolation. However, if Patty is sending the same information to all of them, say she's sending them the date of the party or the time of the day and whatever address. Uh, we're going to have a small example, so it's just going to be the date. Um, then she's using the same message in all three positions. So if Eve is getting all these three ciphertexts, she of course knows the public keys. Those are well, public. And she knows that the exponents are three. She knows the uh, NA and B and N C, And she now additionally obtains the ciphertexts. Now, the way this is typeset and uh, already in the title saying CRT, so Chinese Remainder Theorem, should make you think of what you know about the Chinese Remainder Theorem. And what you do know is that you can compute a solution here which satisfies all three of these equations. There's a unique solution of this system of equation modulo the product of the moduli. So you can receive, uh, you can obtain using the CRT method m cubed modulo n a n b and n c. 
But you should also realize one of the conditions of RSA was that the message is less than n. Okay, so in this case, m is less than n a, m is less than n b, and n is less than n c. So that means that the cube m times m times m is less than the product of the modifier. So we're again in a situation where there is no reduction. If you get this m cubed, we have a cube as an integer. So that means, just like on the previous slide, where we saw the 4096 and could instantly conclude that the message was 16, here we're seeing the message with now an increased modulus of three times the size, but we get an integer cube. So doing this computation, Eve has obtained m cubed, and then because it's an integer cube, she can simply compute the third root with her pocket calculator. So let's do an example of this. Here are the three keys. Of course, these are too small, they have to fit on the side, so these are just products of three digit primes. And the ciphertexts are below. And then you go through the normal steps of the CRT computation to get this very large number, which is n cubed, model the product of those two, three numbers, and we know we can't just forget about this mod n a and b and c, and say m cubed is this large number starting with 1995, and then, well, compute the cube root, and we're getting that uh, Patty is having a party on the 27th of December this year. So Eve better hurry up and get ready for the party. Now, how could we have avoided this one? This works each time that they all use the same exponent. So here it is exponent 3 for 3 messages. If it was exponent 5 for 5 messages, then Eve could again do the Chinese domain theorem computation. So as soon as she gets a higher power than the product is, and well, the e tells you what power it is. So if it's an e, if they're all using exponent e, then e has to collect e such ciphertext. So if they would instead be using the 65537, she would need to find some, well, pretty big party organizer, organizer patty who has sent messages to at least 65537 many people. So, okay, this is really only a problem for low exponent, but well, you might want to use 17 or you might want to use 3, so this is an issue. Now again, the solution would be to use padding, but what we did in, or what the recommendation was for the previous solution, wouldn't work here. So if you just would be using padding, um, first you take the message, then you encode it, and this would be a deterministic process so that the other side knows how to decode, then again it would be the same message. It would be the 27th of December 2020, and then some random garbage. However, if we define a function that is randomized so that it's not the same message, and of course, then we also have to sacrifice a little bit of space so she can't send the dates with six digits. If she only has six, six digits of public keys, she can only use four digits for the message and then two digits for the padding. So that way she can get herself out of the issue um, by adding padding or the scheme should be helping in doing that. And so, yes, uh, we can work around this, but we're getting more and more conditions on what this padding has to satisfy. So schoolbook RSA would be just plainly using the message as it comes in. And we now have argued for, we do need also some padding in order to deal with short messages. And we need to deal with randomizing the padding so that we can avoid this attack.